good afternoon and it's great to have you with this afternoon's webinar. I'm Jaya Calder from Highlands and Islands Enterprise and I'm helping my colleague Andrea McCall run our Nexus session with Zero Waste Scotland on the make, remake, reuse, why the circular economy makes business sense. Now just to advise you we're recording today's session and we're happy to share a copy of the recording and slides with anyone that's interested after the webinar. Now, although you're as an audience member automatically muted, your input is not only welcome, but absolutely positively encouraged. So please use your question box at any point throughout the webinar to submit, whether it be a question, a comment or feedback. And also another thing just to advise that directly after this webinar finishes, we've attached a small number of non-anonymous survey questions for you to complete. But we're also giving you the option of answering those same questions via an anonymous survey monkey link. And that'll be contained within the follow-up email, which everyone will receive tomorrow. So the message is whatever way you feel most comfortable in submitting your views, we'd love your views to help us. And Really, what we're trying to do with that is improve our webinar series and how we do it. So I'd like to move on to Andrea to introduce the webinar. Andrea. Yes, thank you, Jaya. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm Andrea McCall. I work in the life sciences team at Highlands and Islands Enterprise in Inverness. And I'm just welcoming you briefly to our Nexus webinar series. Um, and then the Web's and Nexus webinars are there to bring together people who are working in or interested in the life sciences and technology sectors. So our Nexus co-working space, that's a physical space we run on the Inverness campus, and also this event series um, are made possible through the Northern Innovation Hub, um, and that hub is funded through the Inverness and Highland City Region deal and also European funding. But today I'm, I'm delighted to be joined by Helen, Helen Lavery from Zero Waste Scotland. Um, and she's going to share some examples um, of circular and common economy in action in the life sciences and technology sectors. So without further ado, just handing over to Helen now. Hello, thank you, Andrea and Jaya, and it's great to be with you all today. Um, so, as I was introduced, I'm Helen Lavery from Zero Waste Scotland. So, Zero Waste Scotland is funded by the Scottish Government and through European Regional Development Funds. And we exist to lead Scotland to use products and resources responsibly. And we focus our work on where we can have the biggest impact on climate change. Everything we do here at Zero with Scotland is informed by research and we use these insights to inform policy and to motivate individuals and businesses to embrace the environmental, economic and social benefits of a circular economy. My role within Zero Waste Scotland is Regional Engagement Manager covering the Highlands and Islands region and I work in partnership with Highlands and Islands Enterprise, really building on one of our core values of collaboration. And in the normal world, I'm based out of the HIE office in Inverness. So in my role, I work with businesses, social enterprises, communities and other public bodies to help create a more circular economy for the highlands and islands and to support the region in realising the benefits of making best use of the world's limited natural resources. Now I'm going to play a short video which illustrates our organisational ambitions and our new approach to the way that we work. Scotland and much of the world has declared a climate emergency. Global emissions are destroying our planet, and if we carry on as we are, it's set to get worse. Four-fifths of Scotland's carbon footprint comes from products and materials, and the production, consumption and waste of these products and materials are heating the earth at an alarming rate. This includes the energy required to grow, make, process and transport them. Whether they are made here in Scotland or elsewhere, Climate change doesn't respect borders, it affects everyone. Roughly three planets would be required if everyone lived the way people live in Scotland, and we only have one. 
but Scotland can show the world another way. For Zero Waste Scotland, that means leading Scotland to use products and resources responsibly. Making Scotland a pioneer of the circular economy, just as we were a pioneer of the Industrial Revolution. Our organisation is already at the heart of a political and public shift in attitudes towards the environmental consequences of our lifestyles. Making us a lighthouse for the circular economy. Our strategic outcomes will focus on where, as a society, we can have the greatest impact on climate change. They include responsible consumption, helping people live sustainable lives so we don't exhaust the Earth's natural resources. Responsible production, changing the way industry designs and trades goods so materials are kept in circulation for as long as possible. And maximising value from waste and energy, so where waste occurs, we make sure we reuse or recycle as much as we can. But we need to do more, much more. Of course, it won't be easy. But with our dedicated people, great relationships with partners, and trust from businesses and organisations, we are well placed to achieve it. And we need others to help, both locally and internationally. To meet the scale of the challenge, we need to evolve as an organisation. That's why we're transforming Zero Waste Scotland to meet our ambitions. Investing in our staff and building valuable partnerships will define our future success. Through our values of being pioneering, collaborative, focused and authentic, we will show the world how to live a truly low carbon life. This is our vision. This is our future. This is our plan. Are you ready to help make it happen? So I am here to talk to you today about the circular economy. But we can't really talk about the circular economy without first having a look at our current dominant linear model, where we take resources from source, we create something from them, we use it, and then we chuck it away. And this linear model is what drove the Industrial Revolution. It's allowed us to overcome challenges around food production, housing, and clothing. It's driven technological advances and innovations for decades. But today, the downsides of a linear economy are increasingly apparent and damaging. So we're going to do a quick quiz, which highlights the wasteful way in which we currently use resources and will help us to start to change our thought processes a bit. So I'll ask three questions. It'd be great if you could pop your answers into the message box. So firstly, on average, what percentage of its lifetime do you think a standard domestic car is driven for? Any thoughts? Helen, we're getting the, the answers in and it's far ranging. <laughs> what we, what got we got? 12 years, four years, 2%. 15 years, one year, five years, 1%. Okay. <laughs> so on average, um, a standard domestic car is only driven for 8% of its life, which means for a staggering 92% of its life, it's parked up and not being used. And secondly, on average, for how many minutes is a standard household drill used for during its lifetime? Twenty minutes, sixty minutes, hundred and twenty seven minutes, sixty five minutes, fifteen minutes, hundred and twenty minutes. Oh, we had one quite close. Hundred and eighty. <laughs> So only 13 minutes, which begs the question, why do we all need individual drills within our household? And then finally, from field to fork, what percentage of the food we produce is used and what percentage is wasted? Fifty-fifty. Many, many minutes. I can't do the maths quick enough. 50%, 20%, 37, 39, 25, 60%. 
so close. So 66% of the food that we produce is used and a staggering 33% um, just goes to waste. So I think the wider awareness that our current systems are not sustainable has been apparent for quite some time. And that awareness is growing across producers and consumers. And the current challenges the economy is facing in the midst of COVID-19 are highlighting the vulnerabilities of our linear model further. Only around 8.6% of all extracted resources are being reused or recycled globally. And this not only has significant environmental impacts, but it also limits our ability to respond to crisis and to shock. So as we move towards COVID recovery, governments are recognising that rebuilding can't just be about returning the economy to its previous state. So we're planning a green recovery and build back better by doing more differently to make things last. And the circular economy is going to play a big part in this, allowing us to collectively meet the Scottish Government's pledge to end Scotland's contribution to the climate crisis by 2045. Entrepreneurs across Scotland have already demonstrated how invaluable innovation, collaboration, adaptability and communication are in an emergency. And Scotland now has the world's third greenest grid thanks to the Scottish Government's renewable policies and this provides really strong foundations to build back our recovery from coronavirus forging the sustainable circular economy we need to save us from the climate crisis and allowing us to create stronger, greener, safer and a healthier economy for Scotland. So what is the circular economy? The circular economy is a fundamental shift in the way that we manufacture, use and view materials and products. It reduces waste to a minimum by recovering and reusing as many products and materials as possible over and over again. So in contrast to the linear model, it is a make, remake, reuse economy. And through maximising and maintaining the value of resources, we can cut consumption of raw materials vulnerable to climate risks and build supply chains that are diverse, distributed, flexible and resilient. So the circular economy is built on three core principles that you'll see in this slide. One, design out waste and pollution. Two, keeps products and materials in use. And three, regenerate natural systems. And within this continu continuous loop, there are two cycles, technical and biological. Within biological cycles, materials such as food, cotton, wood are designed to be fed back into the system through processes like composting and anaerobic digestion, regenerating living systems. Technical cycles recover and restore products, components and materials through reuse, repair, remanufacture and as a last resort through recycling. The circular economy requires us to change business models to help capture greater value from products whilst developing a new type of relationship with the supply chain to allow us to keep valuable resources in use for longer. And one of the biggest differences is the customer's role. So the focus is no longer on consumption, but instead on use and on function. And this means that businesses have to build long term relationships into their business models. The ultimate goal of the circular economy is to design out waste. It's about responsible production where businesses which supply products and services get the maximum life and value from natural resources used to make them. So the circular economy in practice involves reducing, sharing, 
leasing, reusing, repairing, remanufacturing, and as a last resort, recycling. And it offers businesses across all sectors an opportunity to make significant savings whilst offering greater resilience. Holding on to value from products, parts and resources creates a much more efficient way of working, which ultimately leads to less spend on raw materials. Manufacturing firms in the EU spend on average about 40% of their outgoings on materials. So closed loop models can increase their profitability whilst protecting them from supply chain price fluctuations. For consumers, the circular economy will provide high quality, functional and safe products, which are efficient and affordable. They'll last longer and be designed for reuse, repair and high quality recycling. A whole new range of sustainable services, product as a service models and digital solutions will bring about a better quality of life innovative jobs and upgraded skills and knowledge. Um, and we at Zero Waste Scotland have previously calculated the economic benefits of a circular economy, offering a potential three billion pound boost for Scotland. So to become circular, we can look at rethinking the materials we use, we can use digital to boost efficiency. We can look at retaining ownership to gain a steady income. And we can improve design to maximize value. And there are a number of key strategies that will help us achieve a circular economy. And I'd like to run through these and give some examples of them in action. So circular design. Design sits at the heart of the circular economy. To change the system, it requires us to redesign everything. Products, business models, regions, and the linear systems that have lasted for centuries. And we need to educate and inspire the design industry to take up this challenge. Circularity can't just be an add-on, but it should be an integral part of how companies think about design. So when something is designed, really important decisions are made and these impact on how it's manufactured, used and what happens to it when it's no longer used or wanted. And it's really difficult to go back and change those decisions after the design stage. Um, more than three out of four decisions that directly influence material selection and manufacturing processes are determined in the design phase and over 80 percent of the ecological costs are determined before the product is even created so we have to design products that are easily repaired or remanufactured look at more modular builds and designs and consider how we can ensure the materials used can remain within the value chain with manufacturers taking on extended producer responsibility. Success of the circular economy requires business model innovation to realise the value in investing at that really early stage of design. Secondly, we've got resource recovery. So using byproducts and coal products to unlock hidden value by introducing energy, materials, products and resources back into the life cycle. And of course, maximizing resources use leads to less waste, cutting environmental impact and also wasted costs for businesses. And a great example of resource recovery in the Highlands is the work being done by Oban based Santhela, and they're producing a model for commercial microalgae production. So they're working to create a method for producing algae that can work across multiple sites and locations. And once perfected, it will make it possible for businesses with nutrient rich byproducts, such as whiskey distilleries, to generate revenue by growing and selling microalgae. 
And microalgae is pretty special stuff. Whatever can be made with fossil fuels can be made with algae. And this includes bio-based plastics, pigments and biofuels. Um, and the algae is also a great source of protein and omega-3. So there's potential markets for human or, or livestock supplements too. And it's a great example of circular economy working where a low value byproduct is turned into a high value product. And the algae can be grown on demand and the process can be adaptable to different locations and to different feedstocks, giving it really strong commercial potential. We've got enabling technologies. So design, manufacturing, distribution can all be done digitally and in efficient ways that reduce environmental impact. So for example, monitoring product usage to reduce energy consumption, cutting down on labor and material needs through 3D printing and streamlining distribution. An example of technologies creating circular solutions is RAB Microfluidics based in Aberdeen. And they've designed a diagnostic tool that can help businesses move from reactive to predictive maintenance strategies. And they work across a range of sectors, including oil and gas, aerospace and defense and manufacturing. And the lab on a chip that they have created analyzes machine lubricating oil on site a thousand times faster than fixed site um, commercial labs. So it removes the need for oil samples to be packaged up and sent off for analysis and provides real time health status of machinery. And this results in less time and, and resources being spent on machinery repair and also free staff up to use their skills and time elsewhere in the business. As our models become smarter through digital technologies such as the Internet of Things, big data, blockchain and artificial intelligence will not only accelerate circularity, but also reduce the amount of materials being consumed by our economy, making us much less dependent on virgin materials. Um, we've got product as a service. So providing a product as a service, so the manufacturer retains ownership of the product and provides it as a service to the customer. And this model presents an opportunity to offer a greater customer service, but also to retain customers for life. And a great example of this is Glasgow based egg lighting. So they noticed that businesses weren't considering a lighting fixture's end of life. And they could see huge waste streams being generated by this really linear approach. So in response, they developed a model which means lighting fixtures can last as long as buildings. And their lighting is provided as a service. And the LED smart technology is modular built so it can be repaired really easily. And if parts of the lighting system need replaced or upgraded, the materials are refurbished, keeping them within the cycle. And when a fixture does eventually reach the end of its life, egg, buy it back and refurbish it. So it all comes full circle. This product as a service and circular design model allows egg to build a strong customer base and a steady source of revenue. Um, customers save energy and benefit from lights that be, can be simply upgraded with the latest technology. Leasing. So here the manufacturer retains ownership and is responsible for delivery, maintenance and take back. And a really good example of a number of these strategies being used, including lease models. 
is Gerard Street. Now, Gerard Street describe themselves as the Spotify of headphones. And in response to the challenge that globally we throw away 15 million kilograms of headphones every year due to faults or advances in technology, Gerard Street designs a high quality modular built headphone for easy disassembly, refurbishment and repair. So the headphones are offered on a subscription basis, allowing customers to easily upgrade and repair for free. And as a result, 85% of components are reused and customers get affordable, high quality products, along with a really high level of customer service. And it also means that Gerard Street requires less newly sourced materials to create new headphones. Remanufacturing, where products at end of usable life are disassembled into components, and those components are then brought back to original quality, then used to create new products that are identical to the original or often even higher spec. And I think it's useful to point out here that remanufactured products should not be considered as used, refurbished, repaired or reused. And a good example of this is Glasgow-based Mackie Automatic and Manual Transmissions. And they are the UK's leading manufacturer of automotive, industrial and marine transmissions. And they've been operating since the 70s. So their specialised facility allows them to remanufacture automatic and manual gearboxes at speed. So automatic gearboxes are among the most complex components of modern cars with really high embedded material value. And Mackie ship around 100 remanufactured gearboxes a month and their return remanufacture business model results in significant resource savings. Reuse, using products and materials for their intended use for as long as possible. So a good example of this is a, a great example of a company creating innovative solutions to extend the life of materials is Highland Galvanizers based in Elgin. And they've developed a pioneering way of extending the lifespan of motorway crash barriers. So traditionally, the steel barriers uh, get a protective galvanized coating of zinc alloy, which lasts around 25 to 30 years, at which point rust sets in and the steel is scrapped. So Highland galvanizers have developed a way of recoating before the rust sets in meaning the barriers can last for an additional 25 years with the same strength and safety properties as a new barrier. And the process creates a massive 89% reduction in CO2 through recoating rather than scrapping and also removes the need for newly sourced steel. And it prevents unnecessary waste and also offers a huge saving to the public purse. Repair. Design is really important here to ensure that products can be separated and disassembled easily. And then finally, we'll touch on the sharing economy. So sharing assets across multiple customers, either through the manufacturer retaining ownership or peer-to-peer -peer sharing. A really interesting model for our rural communities across the Highlands and Islands. And an example of the sharing economy, economy is STEP in Stirling. And they offer a technology space to businesses. And this space includes um, innovative 3D printing and laser lab facilities. So it allows businesses access to expensive high-tech equipment for various uses without them having to invest in the equipment themselves. So we see across these nine strategies, 
for post-COVID recovery, circular principles provide credible solutions which support greater resilience. Design and product policies such as repairability, reusability and the potential for remanufacturing stabilise stock availability and really encourage competitiveness. So I wanted to close the session with an overview of the support that we offer here at Zero Waste Scotland. So we've already um, supported more than 200 companies find inventive ways of designing, producing and consuming things differently to create successful circular goods and services from refurbished computers and upcycled furniture to an alternative to palm oil made from spent coffee grounds. And even as we discussed, one company which shifted from selling light fixtures to leasing light. And we're here to support in a range of ways. So we're just about to launch our next round of the Circular Economy Business Support Service, which provides one-to-one -one consultancy support to SMEs to help drive forward circular projects within their business. And it's designed to help companies explore more circular ways of doing business that can result in resource efficiencies, improve profitability, higher quality products, increase customer base and alternative supply chains. And the service is open to businesses and organisations across all sectors in Scotland. And it can be done at various stages in project development from initial idea, including feasibility and research, to implementation stage, where we can offer more intensive in-business support to get a project up and running. Upon completion of the service, any actions that might have been recommended might be eligible for funding which can be applied for via the Circular Economy Development Grant. So, for example, practical development costs, including prototyping, lab testing and field testing of circular economy concepts. And the development fund is also open to businesses who have not gone through the service. For SMEs with more advanced projects needing commercialisation, the Circular Economy Investment Fund is available and it offers funding between £50,000 to a million pounds. We also have our business support network and it's overseen by a really active steering group and provides opportunities for businesses based in Scotland to come together to focus on collaboration and action and work together to drive forward the circular economy in Scotland. We can also run innovation workshops which help businesses look at circular concepts through an innovation canvas model. A great place for businesses to start is having a look at our accelerator site, which contains some great resources and case studies. And I also wanted to highlight our new energy efficiency business support service, which has replaced the Resource Efficient Scotland programme, or RES, as you might have known it. And this service is now completely focused on energy. So the service offers free advice and technical support. It shares best practice and new te technologies to support organisations to be more energy efficient and to reduce their carbon footprint. And businesses can now receive a free virtual energy audit. We also have a number of sector specialists um, across energy, bioeconomy, manufacturing, construction and procurement. And finally, there is me based in the region and happy to support businesses directly. So please just get in touch if you've got any inquiries. And I'll pass it back to Andrea there and we can, we can open up for questions. Thank you very much, Helen. That was absolutely great. Uh, we've had a few questions come in, but we can always take more. The first question that's come in is looking at best practice. 
And how can a business access examples of best practice that others have already developed in the same sector and potentially be introduced to businesses who are good case studies? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, we've got a wealth of case studies at the moment and we're actually producing more. And our new case studies are really going to focus on the impact that circular models have had on a business. So in terms of cost savings and increase in profits and how that model has been developed as well. Um, so just get in touch if you want to, to learn more about what other businesses have been up to. Um, we can also give international examples as well as what's happening here in Scotland and make those links to other businesses. Um, to share their experiences um, and as I mentioned in one of my slides we've got our um, business network as well across Scotland which is a good place for businesses to come together and um, dis discuss best practice and circular economy concepts. Thanks and thanks to an audience member for our next question which focuses on the impact of any changes. So if a business has ideas for change that they want to make, is it possible to ask you for help with assessing the impact of the proposed changes, for example, how you calculate changes? Yeah, um, we can certainly help with that. So part of our um, business, our newly launched business support service, um, we've got um, a very initial stage where we can help with very early project development and a big part of that will be around how what is the impact of these changes and how do we record them and how do we record them over a longer period of time as well okay thanks the next question and please submit your questions because this is the the uh, i've just got another couple and this one is around about measures that you're using in marketing and sales materials can Zero Waste Scotland advise or do you have any research on which measures are actually the most impactful when you use those in marketing sales materials for CO2 savings or safe transport miles or, or whatever waste is reduced? So, yeah, and I suppose that's quite a difficult one to answer and I think it would depend on who your customer was and who you are marketing whatever your product or service is as to what they might be looking for. Um, but again, it's probably case by case, um, but it is something that we'd be happy to support with. So again, it would be a case of getting in touch and we could um, help review that for you. Okay, thanks. Now, also, if anyone would like to come off mute and speak directly with Andrea or Helen, please use the raised hand icon that you can see there. And if you've got a mic, I'm happy to take you off mute. While we're waiting for another couple of questions to come in, can I ask both Andrea and Helen, what if we, our audience come away with one key message from today's webinar, what would that be? And I'll come to Helen first. So um, I think the most important message is that Zero Waste Scotland now have this regional approach to supporting the circular economy across the Highlands and Islands region and there is now a dedicated resource here to help. So if you are exploring concepts or just want to know more about the circular economy, we are here to help and, and please do just get in touch. Thanks Helen. Andrea? Perhaps if you take yourself off mute first. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, a really interesting point that Helen made earlier actually that I wanted to highlight, um, which is about, you know, designing a long-term relationship with your customers um, or your users into, uh, into your business model. And I think that's quite a significant change um, for some industries. Um, you know, it's less about just making something and, and selling it and then you forget about it. It's, it's really considering the whole life cycle of the product and how you can come back in into the relationship during during that life cycle of the product or even at the end of the life cycle so and to kind of bring it back into the into the circular system um, and i yeah i really think that's quite a major change in in thinking and that will require um yeah a, a lot of um changes i think but it's obviously worthwhile you know getting to this sooner rather than later i think because i think this is really the the, the future that we're looking at here so Thank you very much. Now, this is a question and an appeal to the audience from our speakers. 
because we want to hear from you about any active circular economy activity that is in the region or any big opportunities and you can either use your question box to um, use that or get in touch directly with um, any of our speakers and another question has come in with a remote community how can the highlands and islands promote a sharing economy for example car clubs work really well in cities but in somewhere like the Western Isles, it's much more challenging. If I can put that to Helen and Andrea. Yeah, and I think it is a lot more challenging, but it probably a lot more impactful if there was a model created that worked. Um, so even if it was tool sharing libraries or, or other resources across a community, um, I think it, it, there could be huge value in that um, and also keeping resources on island as well and, and ensuring that um, things that might be regarded as, as waste streams but that could have value are kept on island and, and kept um, within the value chain as well. So I don't really have an answer for that but it's something that I'm really keen to explore is how we can support our rural communities to take on circular economy practices and it's a, a bit of work that we're going to be working on with Highlands Islands Enterprise with their um, Strengthening Communities Directorate to take forward. Thank you very much for that. Now I'm going to pass to Andrea to have the closing remarks for the webinar. Andrea, over to you. Thanks, Jaya. Um, yeah, I just wanted to obviously thank Helen for her very insightful um, talk. That was, that was really interesting. And I hope that um, you know some people in the audience have, have found that useful and have maybe some ideas that maybe want to get in touch with Helen to discuss. Um, so just before we're closing, I just wanted to highlight two um, funding opportunities here that have just been announced and have very tight turnarounds. Um, one, the first fund here um, from Innovate UK closes at the end of this month, at the end of July, um, and it's grant funding that's available for UK businesses for um, R&D projects um, to um, across the economy to recover from COVID in a clean and resilient way. So exactly what we talked about today. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that um, the Highlands and Islands Enterprise Innovation Team can actually provide, provide support in reviewing any applications you may want to submit. So if you have a draft application, even if it's an early draft, um, you know, get in con contact with the innovation team. The best person would be Karen Skeen. Um, and the second fund I wanted to highlight is actually a, an SBRI, so a Scottish Business Research Initiative contract, um, where organisations can apply um, for projects where they would support the public sector to recover from COVID-19 in a sustainable manner. So it's a different type of, of, of uh, fund, um, but that closes on the 5th of August. So please have a look online on the Innovate UK website for more details on both of those in case you're interested and get in touch if you wanted to, to chat through any of those funds, because again, the high innovation team can know a bit more about this than I do actually. Um, <clears throat> And then, we, as we already talked about, we're looking for your feedback. So please either through the GoToWebinar system, answer the questions, or you can use our SurveyMonkey link here that will also be emailed to you. And lastly, we've got our next webinar penciled in for the 23rd of July at half 10 in the morning. So please have a look out for uh, an invitation to that that will be dropping into your inbox hopefully very soon. Well, it just leaves me to thank our speakers and most importantly, our audience. Thanks for your participation. It always makes for a better webinar. And we look forward to seeing you at webinar very, very soon. Thanks. Thank you.